For loops and strings have a special relationship. The idea of a for loop is to run a fixed number of times. You can write it in other ways, but its primary purpose is to start at a given point, go up to a certain point, and increment at a given rate. And then strings have a fixed length. So if you have a statement that's able to start at a beginning point and at an end point, and then you have something that has a fixed starting point and a fixed ending point, hopefully you can see why those two go together well. And that is the case that we have with for loops and strings. Because strings have a definite starting place and a definite ending place. The ending place is its length, and the beginning place is its index. Now it's important to remember that the index is always one less than what the length is going to be because the length starts counting at one, whereas the index starts counting at zero. So if you divided a string out into its individual characters, its first character would be at index zero, but the first index would be counted as one slot. And so this becomes important when we get to the end of a string because the index is always going to be one less than the length. And so we're going to see that's important when we're working with our for loop. Now in this video, what I'm trying to do is give tasks to perform with for loops on strings. And so the first task is to print the word repaid by visiting and printing each of its characters using a for loop. So we're going to start at the beginning of the word repaid and visit each of its characters and print out each of its characters. So we have the word repaid. I've showed its length in green and its index in orange in the table in the lower right hand corner. And then we have a T chart, which is going to track what I is going to be. And then we're going to have some output at each iteration of the loop. Now let's see how we would write this for loop. Well, first of all, where would we start? Well, we'd want to start at zero because that is the index of where the first letter is located. Next, where would we want to end? Well, we'd want to end at the length of the word. No matter what it is, I'd want to stop at its length. So instead of saying, I want to end at 5, where the last index is, I'm going to use word.length because that's going to give me flexibility to put in any word or change the word into whatever word I would like later. And then, as I said in the task, we're going to count up by ones. We're going to go through each individual index and visit every letter inside of the word. Now the question becomes, what are we going to do when we visit each individual index? We're going to print out the character that we find there. So we're going to use word.char at i. And i is going to move as the loop iterates. All right, let's go ahead and trace our way through this loop. As I said before, we're going to start at 0. Next, we're going to check the condition, make sure that 0 is less than the length. It is. So therefore, we get true. So then what we do is we go into the system out print statement, which is going to print the character at i, and the character at i is r. So we output r. Next, we're going to increment i. i is going to become 1. Check the condition. Yes, that's true. Print out the character at 1, and that is e. Increment i by 1. Now it's 2. Check the condition. See if that's true. Well, yes, it is. Print out the character at that index, which is 2, so we get p. Increment i by 1, so now it's 3. Check the condition, c is 3 less than the length. Yes, it is. So therefore, we're going to print the letter at the index, which is a. Increment again, we get 4. Check to see if the condition is true. It is, 4 is less than 6. We're going to print the letter at that index, which is i. We're going to increment by 1, get 5, check the condition, yes, that's true. We get D, and at this point we have completed the word, and we have iterated through each of the individual characters. We're going to add 1, and at this point, this is where we would want it to stop. But unfortunately, we're going to find that our condition is still true. And I did this on purpose to show a common error. If we try to say word.char at i at this point, there is no letter at index 6 because index 6 doesn't exist. That's the length of the word, but the length is always one longer than what the index is. So let's go ahead and change the loop and get rid of this common error. And instead of using i is less than or equal to word.length, we're just going to say less than. You could say less than or equal to word.length minus 1, but it's more common to just use less than and not include the equal sign. So let's take a step back and let's say that i had just become 5. We would print out the d. i would be incremented to 6. 
we would come to the condition, the condition would be false, and we would stop the loop there. And so therefore, our output would be repaid. Let's say that I wanted to do this with the method substring instead of char at. Well, it's just a small change. So I would say word.substring i, and then the second parameter of substring is exclusive, and it's always going to be one further than where you want to end. So if I wanted the letter at zero, I would say zero comma one. Because I don't want to put constants there, I'm going to use i instead. And what is one greater than i? Well, it's i plus one. Word.substring i comma i plus one would also meet the goal of what we're trying to accomplish, and that is print out the word visiting each one of its individual characters. Next, instead of printing the word forwards, let's try to print the word backwards. I have my for loop, but instead of starting at the beginning of the word repaid, let's say that I wanted to start at the end. Well, what I would do is I would say it's the length but remember, I have to subtract 1 because there is no value at index 6. I start at i is equal to word.length minus 1. The condition is going to be, where am I going to stop at? The end of every word is its first index, which is 0. So as long as i is greater than or equal to 0, I have not reached the end of the word. So that's why I say i is greater than or equal to 0. And lastly, I'm not counting up this time. I'm counting down. So therefore, I'm going to say i minus minus instead of i plus plus. Now I'm only going by one because I want to visit each one of the characters in the word. What am I going to print out each time? Well, I'm going to print out word.char at i. It's exactly the same as the last loop. The only difference is, is that i is going to be different. It's not going to start at zero. It's going to start at five and count down instead of up. So let's see how this loop would work. We start with the length minus one, which is five. We check the condition. Yes, that's true. We get the character that's there. We get the D. We decrement by 1. We get 4. Check the condition. Yes, that's true. Print out I. Decrement again. Get 3. Check the condition. Yes, that's true. Get the character that's there. We get the A. Decrement by 1. We go to index 2. 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, we get the character that's at index 2, and that is P. Decrement by 1, we get 1. The condition is still true. We get the letter E. Decrement by 1, I is now 0. 0 is greater than or equal to 0. We get the character that's at 0, that is R. Lastly, we decrement by 1, I becomes negative 1. Negative 1 is not greater than or equal to 0, so therefore our loop is finished. And we have printed the word repaid backwards. And the word repaid backwards is the word diaper, interestingly enough. What if I wanted to do this using substring instead of char at? Well, it would look like this. The exact same thing as the last program. I would say i, i plus 1, and the i plus 1 would be excluded because that's how substring works. Next, I have a little bit of a trickier situation. Let's say that I wanted to print repaid backwards but instead of the loop going backwards, I want the loop to go forward or count up. You say, well, why in the world would you want to do this? Sometimes you can't control the way that your loop is moving. And so I want to show you an interesting way to use the loop to count backwards as the loop is going forward. So let's see what we mean. So as I said, I want the loop to go forward. So I'm going to start at the zeroth index, I'm going to loop up to the length, not including the length, but one before it and I'm going to count up by one. Now, I'm going to print the same way that I printed in the last two examples, except for I have word.char at question mark, question mark, question mark. And so what is going to go there? Well, where do I want to start? I want to start at the end of the word. So I'm going to create a variable that's going to indicate where the end of the word is. And that variable is going to be len. And len is going to be the length minus one. And so in this case of the word repaid, len would be the equivalent of five. I'm going to put that inside of my loop. So I say word.char at len. Now this is not going to be the complete answer, but it's going to start us on our way. So if I was to run this right now, I would start at the end at five, d is at five, and so let's see what would happen if we run the loop. It would run from zero to six, and it would continually print out d, because nothing is happening to len every time the loop runs. 
we're going to have to do something to len modify it in some way in order to get it to move back a certain number of spaces each time and print out the word correctly. I've added some values to my t-chart and let's talk about this idea of moving back from the end of the word. So if I start at the end of the word D, how far back is D from the end of the word? Well, it's kind of a trick question because D is the end of the word. So therefore it is zero spaces back. So I'm gonna put a zero in the back column. How far is I back from the end? Well, it's one back from the end. How far is A back? It's two. How far is P back? It's three. How far is E back? It's four. And R is five spaces back from the end. And you say, well, why does that matter? Let's take the system out print out of the loop for a second. And let's just say, what would I be if we were to run the loop right now? So if I was to run this loop right now, watch what I would be. And hopefully you see the relationship. The spaces back is equivalent to what the value of I would be at the time. So let's see if we can use this to our advantage. And we're going to do that by taking the length and subtracting I from it. So if the length is five, the first time we would subtract zero, the second time one, two, three, four, and five. And so I'm going to do that inside of my loop by saying word.charat len minus i. And let's see what happens when we run this loop. So we start with i being zero. We check the condition. Is that less than the length? Well, yes, it is. So let's go inside of the loop. So when I say len minus i, well, len in this case is five. Five minus i, which is zero, is still five. So therefore, we get the output of d. Next, we increment i. 1 is less than 5, so we continue on. And then we get length minus 1, which is going to be the fourth index. And we get i. Increment by 1, we get 2. The condition is still true. Length minus i is 3, so therefore we print out a. Increment again, i becomes 3. The condition is true. Length minus i is 2, therefore we get p. Increment again by 1, i becomes 4. The condition is true. Take the length and subtract i, we get 1, e is in the 1 index. Increment again, i is 5, the condition is still true. Length, which is 5, minus i, which is 5, gives us 0. Therefore, we go to the beginning of the word, get the r. Increment one more time, i becomes 6, the condition is no longer true. And therefore, we have met our goal of printing the word backwards. And we did it while the for loop was running forward and we were traversing the word backwards inside of the loop. If we wanted to do this with substring, let's see how that would work. We would just say the length minus i. And then if we wanted to go one further than that, we would just add one to the length and then subtract i from it. And it would give us the same result, diaper. For loops and strings have a special relationship, and that is because for loops run a fixed number of times. And if you have something that is a fixed length, well, then a for loop is perfect for that. You'll see that with both strings and later on with arrays. And so this is also prepping the beginning programmer to look at arrays. And so hopefully you can see through this video and these examples that strings and for loops are a natural marriage because of the nature of both. So for loops can be used to reverse strings going forwards, backwards, and you can even write it where the loop is going forward and you're traversing the word backwards in the string. Like I said, sometimes you can't control which direction your loop is heading, so you have to do some programming gymnastics in order to get it to do what you want it to do. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.